Hi, I'm Gregory Paulini, and in this episode of Table Saw Techniques, I'm going to show you how to virtually eliminate tear out when cutting on your saw stop table saw. So stick around. Tear out is a concern that almost every woodworker needs to deal with. If you're trying to do high quality work, you want to eliminate tear out. And with the real thin veneers of modern plywoods or the thin coating of modern melamines, tear out's becoming a bigger and bigger issue every day. Take a look at this. Now that's some pretty bad tear out. This is completely unacceptable. So first, let's think about why tear-out happens. Well, for the most part, tear-out's going to be found in composite goods or sheet goods, such as melamine or plywood, and it's going to happen in solid lumber when you're cutting across the grain. Almost never do you get tear-out when you're cutting with the grain on solid wood. All of those fibers are supported. When we're cutting across the grain, though, and the blade goes through the board and exits through the bottom, these bottom fibers here are unsupported and they don't have much resistance to flexing out of the way. That's how tear out occurs. So what are the steps in eliminating tear out? Well, one of the simplest things is start with the right blade. This blade has a lot of teeth on it and the tops are alternating. They slice through the wood. We've all played the game where we're in the car and we've got our hand out the window doing this and we feel a lot of drag or sometimes it goes nice and smooth. Well, that's essentially what the blades are doing. And when you've got a blade that's got really high angle top bevels on it, it just slices through the wood. What this means as far as tear out is there's less resistance or less drag and it takes less effort to slice through those fibers. So if it takes less effort, that's less energy that's actually going to bend those fibers back and create tear out. So we're going to start with the right blade. All right, so another fundamental is in addition to using the proper blade, to always orient your workpiece so that the good face is facing up. So if this were a piece for a back of a cabinet, let's see the inside of a cabinet where I'm going to actually be able to see it. And I don't want to see any tear out on that leading edge. I always want to make sure that the surface I'm going to view is facing up. Because as the blade rotates and cuts downward, that top layer is supported by the fibers beneath it. If I flip the blade over and now my good face is down, well, now those wood fibers are unsupported as the cutting thrust forces downward. All right, so tip number two, is always orient your board upwards. This is tip number three, painter's tape. Whenever I have a board that I can't orient so that the good side is facing up, you know, maybe it's something that I'm always going to see both sides, then what I want to do is the downward face. I want to put blue painter's tape across where I'm going to cut. Now, that painter's tape actually supports the wood fibers. So as I cut down, this kind of holds everything together and helps reduce chip out or tear out. All right? Now, a couple of things we want to be aware of with this. This tape does have a thickness to it. It's about four thousandths of an inch thick, sometimes as much as ten thousandths. And that's actually going to shim the workpiece up or shim it away from my miter gauge, the fence on my miter gauge. So what I want to do is make sure that I have an equal amount of tape on the opposite face. So now that's going to shim against my fence, keeping everything in plane with this one. And this is going to keep the other end of my board level. All right. So now let's see how this cuts. But before I fire up the saw, I'm going to put on safety glasses and hearing protection.
okay, I'm going to wait for that blade to stop. Now I consciously say to myself, the blade has stopped. It is safe to come in and remove the waste. And as we peel back the tape, wow, that is a crisp edge. So for my next technique, I'm going to share a scoring cut. Now, obviously the painter's tape trick works, but you may have some really big panels that you need to cut, and it might be inconvenient to do the painter's tape trick. So in that case, try a scoring cut. A scoring cut is basically when we just adjust the height of the blade to just barely cut into the workpiece. I've got the blade height here at about a sixteenth of an inch. That's it. All right. And I want to make sure that my board doesn't change position. So when I make this cut, I'm going to use a stop block. I don't want this board to shift at all while I'm making the cut and furthermore when I come back for my second cut. The scoring cut operation is a two-stage process. My first cut just barely cuts through the surface of the wood. I don't have a lot of downward pressure on this, so not a lot to really cut through the fibers and tear them downwards. That's going to create a little relief, basically bringing me into the board. Then I'm going to raise the blade up to just beyond the surface of the, of the board, and I'm going to complete my cut. What happens is where the blade cuts through, exits the board now, there's a relief. And the fibers that I'm cutting are actually supported. And I'm going to put on, back on my safety glasses and my hearing protection. Okay, my blade is stopped, and again, super crisp edge. And this is in melamine, which is notorious for chip out and tear out. And that's four things to remember to virtually eliminate tear out when using your saw stop table saw. One, be sure to use the right type of blade. Two, remember your piece orientation. Always keep your good face up if, if, if ever possible. Three, painter's tape. It gives a little extra support to the wood fibers. And four, scoring cuts. With those four tips, you should virtually eliminate tear out when cutting on your saw stop table saw. So be sure to join me again for another episode of Table Saw Techniques.